hey guys welcome back so in this video we're gonna go ahead and create our first project and make sure that we can get started writing code so to get started the only requirement you're gonna need here is python so make sure you have python installed when you install python with the normal process you're going to have pip and then we are going to be using pip to install our our project dependencies like flask and alike so to get started i'm here in my terminal so if you're on mac or linux open up your terminal if you're on windows open up your command prompt so first you want to first verify that you have python so go ahead and type in python in your terminal when i type in python you can see that i get the python share open up by default it opens up python 2 so this is not what we want so i'm gonna quit here now on mac or linux when you install python 3 you can use that by typing in python 3 so when I type in Python 3, you can see that I have Python 3.7.7. So let me just quit this one again. So verify that you have Python. So if I do Python 3 dash dash version, you can see that I have the, you can see my version. Now to check if you have pip, you can type in pip. So since I'm, I'm using a Mac, you can type in pip 3 dash dash version. And then you can see that we get pip3 version being listed so if you're on windows be sure to you to type in pip or python without putting the three it should be able to work automatically if you install following the default process so once you have that we are going to need a way to manage our virtual environment now if you think about python projects you might be working on like two or three python projects on your computer and a lot of the times you want each of those projects to have its own dependencies in one place such that you can be able to move the project around computers or even put it on a server for hosting without having to look for the packages again so we are going to be creating a virtual environment that will hold all our project dependencies now for us to create a virtual environment we are going to be using a tool called virtual env so if you're on mac or linux go ahead and install it using pip3 so you can type in, type in pip3 install virtual env like this so go ahead and run that so when i run that you can see that mine finished so fast because i already had it on windows go ahead and type in pip install virtual env so once you install that now we can use virtual env to create a virtual environment so over here i'm first going to create a folder that will contain all our project files so i'm going to call this bookmarks rest api and then i'm going to cd into it so bookmarks so now that we are in our bookmarks rest api we can go ahead and create our virtual environment in here so to create a virtual environment we can use the tool we just installed so type in virtual env and then you give it an environment name so mine is going to be called venv like this notice how i'm unable to create it like this so if you ever face that issue be sure to run this using python 3 so you can do python 3 minus m m is for module it's so find that we want to run this module using python 3 so i'm gonna run that and when we run that you can see that now if i do an ls on windows you have to type in like a dir to see if the folder was created so if i do an ls you can see that now we have the folder for our virtual environment and now we need to activate it so now to activate it on linux go ahead and type in source then venv then go to bin then you want to source in the activate script this one so when i do that you can see that my virtual environment is, is activated and we can tell by seeing the name of the virtual environment here so if you ever want to maybe deactivate it you can type in deactivate and it should deactivate it so if you're on windows and you try typing in source it will not work be sure to cd into your virtual environment then scripts then activate.pat file and then you should be able to see that your virtual, your virtual environment is activated like this so now we are here if we do a python dash dash version you can see that the python we're using now is the one that is tied to our project and we don't have to do python 3 anymore and if you ever wanted to know which which python you're using or the where the python you're using is you can type which python and then you should be able to see where it is so the one we are using is in our virtual environment so good now let's go ahead and install flask so to install flask go ahead and do pip install flask like this so it's gonna go ahead and install flask so flask also uses some other dependencies so you can see that it installs like ginger2 it's dangerous click uh, typing ex extensions flask also depends on this now our project also depends on this with flask 
So now that we have Flask installed, I'm going to open up this project in VS Code. So on my computer, I can type in code dot and then it should be able to open in VS Code. So you can see here, we have our project and then we have the virtual environment. So I'm going to open the integrated terminal in VS Code because with this one, I don't have to switch between windows. I can just code, I can just work in one editor and things will be fine. So over here, the first thing you're going to need to do is we are going to create an entry point to our server. So out here, I'm going to create a file called app.py. So in the app.py, this is where we're going to be writing our Python code. But before we do that, let me go ahead and activate my virtual environment again, because when you open a new terminal session, you have to reactivate the virtual environment. So let me go ahead and do that. So, so, so now we are going to go ahead and we create a very basic Flask app. So to create a very basic Flask app, we are going to import Flask from Flask. So from Flask, import Flask. So here we need to create an instance of Flask and that will be our app. So you can do like app equals Flask and then we pass in double underscore name, double underscore. So when we instantiate Flask, it needs a way to know where it is being configured from. And that's why you pass in this, this dunder name dunder. So once we are done with this, now we can go ahead and recreate a very basic route. So this can sometimes be called an endpoint and we can create that by using the app and then we use a decorator, we do app dot and then after this we do an HTTP method. So for example, if we wanted to do a get request, we do app dot get and then inside here and then we define the route. So we are going to listen for when a user goes to our homepage and then we're going to create a function to handle that. So here we can just have a function. So for this function, we're going to just be returning hello world hello world like this so don't mind this so now to be able to test out our application if to be able to run it we need to go in our terminal and then we need to tell flask a few things one of them is going to be the environment we are running in so over here we can do export flask underscore env then we, we are going to set that one to development so by default flask will assume that we are running in production so you need to tell it that we are running in development so that it can give us like debugging errors and all that stuff. So let's run that. So another thing we need to define is the path to our Flask app. So we can do that by doing export Flask app and then and that will be the path to the module that has our Flask app. In our case, it is app. So we can do app like this. And now we can run Flask run in our terminal. And once we run that, you should be able to see that we have serving Flask app and then we have the environment you're running on, which is development. And then that turns on like debug mode and all this other stuff. So now if we click on this URL and come to the browser, you can see that we have our hello world. Now the browser can only help us to do get requests, but later we're going to be looking at how to use Postman to also work with other methods like, like post or delete or get. So let's have uh, another basic endpoint over here. So I'm going to have slash hello. So since we are going to be building an API, then it makes sense to start working with JSON already. So over here, so Flask comes with some utilities that can enable us to work with, uh, with JSON. And one we are going to be working with is JSONify. So we want when a user goes to the slash hello route, we want to send them a message. So we're going to send back a Python dictionary. Now we can do JSONify here. We can wrap everything here in JSONify. So we're going to change the function name that handles this so they don't collide. So we're gonna have say hello. So we're gonna have say hello on there. And now if we go back to our application and now we go to the hello route, you can start to get JSON being sent, sent back to us. So one thing here that I want to point out is, so by default, Flask is going to format this into JSON even when we don't use JSONify. So even if we take this one away, so let me take this one away again and come back over here to slash hello. You can see that it works the same. So the Python dictionary is directly mapped to a JSON object and we don't really have to, to do any other extra serialization for this. So that's gonna be it for the setup. If you're on Windows and you get any issues, be sure to check the, be sure to check the description. I will leave some tips in there. Also check the comments because I'm sure some guys are gonna be laying down how things should be done in there. So thanks and I'll talk to you in the next video.